today we are going to discussing about the general pharmacology why we need to discuss the general pharmacology why because there are many concepts which are connected with the general pharmacology right if you take a receptor concept that receptor if you understand the receptor concept it will make you understand right it will helps you understand the drug mechanism in all chapters right and if you understand the terminologies which i use in the general pharmacology you will understand the next lectures upcoming lectures right and it also help you to improve the basic knowledge before learning the pharmacological actions clear so with this we will be starting right we will be starting with the general pharmacology so general pharmacology in this general pharmacology first we discuss so our profession is pharmacy profession there are many mcqs are arising from the scientist part right who is the father of pharmacy that has been asked that question has been asked in the pharmacist examination esic pharmacist examination so that is father of pharmacy is ml shop ml shroff is the father of pharmacy right the terminology which has been introduced by the c s edler is pharmacognosy so c s edler he has used this pharmacognosy term first so he is the father of pharmacognosy he he is considered as a father of pharmacognosy because he used the term pharmacognosy so earlier so that's why he is the father of pharmacognosy so father of pharmacognosy is ca sedler now coming to pharmacology see pharmaco for pharma for pharmacology there are many scientists has been contribute to develop it right so here there are two scientists which are contributed worldwide and there is one scientist which ha he has contributed from our india right so worldwide fathers of pharmacology so these bits uh, these mcqs are very important in case of niper je examinations as well as in the pharmacy examination pharmacist oswald skemitberg oswald skemitberg Rudolf Buchem, right? Rudolf Buchem and Oswald Skemitberg. These both scientists have contributed worldwide, and there is Indian father of pharmacology is the indian father of pharmacology is indian father of pharmacology is ramnath chopra clear so with this we will start with the our general pharmacology so before going to before going to uh, you know explain about the drug we need to understand its definition so before making you understand the definition part 
just i will give you a glimpse about the so uh, a pathophysiology and then i'll make you to understand so the definition of the drug clear so in any person any person how fever occurs how fever occurs the fever is occurs due to the imbalancing of temperature regulation imbalancing of temperature regulation right so this fever it is occurred due to right there is some gram negative bacteria are there these gram negative bacteria which activates phospholipases right these phospholipases phospholipases which destructs or which breaks phospholipids into arachidonic acid arachidonic acid this is mainly phospholipase a2 which breaks the phospholipid into arachidonic acid it is d arachidonic acid and this arachidonic acid gets converted right it is gets converted into in the presence of cox it gets converted into prostaglandin that prostaglandins it is mainly pge2 that alters the of hypothalamus that alters the physiology of hypothalamus and the hypothalamus is mainly regulating the temperature in our body so that's why this hypothalamus would due to the imbalancing of the temperature regulation this would causes the fever right here gram negative bacteria right gram negative bacteria which produces the endotoxins these are very dangerous and these are also called pyrogens pyrogens means which increases the fever right so these will activates the phospholipases that is mainly phospholipase a2 right phospholipases are phospholipase a phospholipase a2 phospholipase c and phospholipase d there are four phospholipases are there right and where the phospholipid membranes cell membranes are all consisting of phospholipids and these phospholipids would be broken down by the phospholipase a2 and this gram negative bacteria which releases the pyrogens or endotoxins these endotoxins which activates the phospholipase a2 and these phospholipase a2 which breaks the phospholipids into arachidonic acid and this arachidonic acid which further gets synthesized into prostaglandins due to the presence of cox cyclooxygenase enzyme cox means cyclooxygenase enzyme and this cyclooxygenase enzyme converts arachidonic acid into Uh, prostaglandins that is mainly prostaglandin e2 and this prostaglandin e2 uh, mainly it is altering the physiology of the hypothalamus then the imbalancing of the temper temperature regulation lead to causes the fever and this is a pathophysiology of the pathophysiology or causing or causing pathway for the fever right so how it could be treated with how it could be treated it could be treated by the antipyretics right mainly pcm paracetamol paracetamol would inhibits the cox enzyme cyclooxygenase enzyme right now paracetamol is a paracetamol it is chemically acetaminophen right acetaminophen acetaminophen is called as paracetamol that means now i am going with the hope you might understand the pathophysiology for the fever and i am going towards the definition of the drug right the drug is a chemical substance
the drug is a chemical substance that we know the acetaminophen or paracetamol is a acetaminophen which is which is a it is a chemical initially when it when it was not discovered before right so chemical structure with chemical substance with known chemical structure right with non chemical structure and when it is introduced to a living system it alters pathophysiology for therapeutic gain so here i want to uh, make you clear one once more right so paracetamol is a acetaminophen right acetaminophen is a structure for paracetamol right and it is a chemical when it was not discovered before right it is a chemical substance with non structure that is acetaminophen is a structure with we have elucidated through the our analytical techniques right chemical substance with no structure when it is introduced to a living system plants or animal right in animals sorry animals are human beings when it is introduced into the living system that alters the pathophysiology and for therapeutic gain that means see the way of causing fever the way of causing fever is called as pathophysiology if hypothalamus is regulating properly the temperature in our body right that is called as physiology when the uh, hypothalamus functions altered that condition is called as disease condition or it is a condition right it is a condition where the temperature regulation has been imbalanced right that condition is called as pathophysiology pathological condition pathological condition means disease condition right so physiology means normal conditions right suppose glucose is getting metabolized uh, metabolized into the pyruvic acids right so likewise this is a physiology and if there is any uh, heart is heart is pumping the blood if it is not pumping the blood and if if anything happens heart right if an, anything happens to the heart that means the physiology of the heart would be altered right that is altered altered and that condition is called as altered physiological condition is called as pathological conditions clear so with this drug is a chemical substance with non structure when it is introduced to a living system to the animals or that alters the pathophysiology for therapeutic gain right so give to give the therapeutic therapeutic activity it has to alter the pathophysiology then it could be possible to move from Deceased condition to and non-deceased condition. That means that drug is treating to be recovered from the deceased condition. Clear? But the definition of the drug, as per the Drug and Cosmetic Act, is right. Any drug or any substance which intended to use for diagnosis, mitigation, to treat the disease. so among these are three words if anything substance is if anything right applying onto a substance whether substance is used topically or internally right topically or internally and whether it is used for therapeutic purpose right therapeutic purpose and mitigation purpose right and diagnosis purpose and these if if any drug is matching any of these terminologies right such substances could be considered as a drug according to the section 3 of drug and cosmetic act so this is the definition is there so this is about the definition of the drug and uh, just learn about the this pathophysiology it will help you in the eicosanoids uh, uh, eicosanoids chapter that is in the local hormones so i'll i'll talk about these at there right clear so next moving to the what is the source of the drug right what is the source of the drug 
source of the drug so in initially in ancient days so all medicines are being synthesized or being extracted from the plants right what are the what are the drugs uh, which are obtained from the plants see here see here morphine is there morphine is there right reserpine morphine is a opioid reserpine is an antihypertensive drug that is vesicular monoamine transport inhibitors pmat inhibitors vmat2 inhibitors right and there are other drugs like atropam muscarin varnesilin so all these are alkaloidal based drugs and morphine is a opioidal drug right so this is about the natural source from the naturally where uh, where we can extract naturally right so from the animals clear from the animals we can extract the insulins bovine insulin so we can extract the insulin clear and from the bacteria so here i want to uh, make you to understand to understand the drugs which are falling under c and cc1 right which are not falling under cc1 right so i'll i'll make you to the difference between drug under included under the schedule cc1 or non cc1 drugs see here any drug which is being extracted from the bacteria is called as antibiotics antibiotics any drug which can be extracted from the bacteria it could be called as it, it is called as antibiotics right which is extracted from the extensively extracted from the bacteria and extracted from the bacteria and we are using these extracted compounds against the bacteria so that is why these compounds extracted from the bacteria is called as anti antibiotics whereas when we have not extracted from the compounds from the bacteria where these compounds synthesized from the laboratory synthetically right so now these drugs are being used to treat the or used to kill the bacteria now these type of compounds called as antibacterials right antibacterials clear our scientists meanwhile our scientists have prepared the drugs which are having less th and less effective but these are having the action right but these are having the action so some um, you know some uh, scientists have taken the morphine right and this morphine upon acetylation upon acetylation they prepared the diacetyl morphine diacetyl morphine is called as heroin diacetyl morphine is called as heroin right diacetyl morphine is called as heroin suppose rather than acetylation i can do the methylation i can do the methylation so now 3 methyl morphine now 3 methyl morphine is called as codeine right 3 methyl morphine is called as codeine right okay and there is atropine i'm taking i'm changing its structure so this atropine it is a cycloplegic right cycloplegic right where the ciliary muscles gets blocked right its its uh, stretchability would be blocked right so the lens has to adjust according to the right according to the object which you are which you are looking about right which you are looking for but suppose i am suppose i am uh, i want to accommodate or my eyes uh, 
uh, if I want to see that object which is in front of me and our lens, our uh, lens should be uh, accommodate uh, to accommodate that uh, object particularly. For its accommodation, that ciliary muscle has to move here and there, right? Ciliary muscle has to move here and there, uh, thereby it can accommodate properly that uh, object which is present opposite. But with this, uh, while using this uh, atropine, right? If you use the atropine topically, and this will directly block the ciliary muscles and it stops the right it stops the that moving part that ciliary muscle movement right the stoppage of the ciliary muscle movement is called as cycloplegic we will discuss in the drug acting on eye for further right so it is having maximum action right maximum t half maximum t half it may be uh, to till the 12 to 19 hours but homotropin the the just changing in uh, removing in the methyl group right methyl group right so just removing of that particular group right this atropin changed into the structure called homotropin homotropin right homotropin is having less effective compared to the atropin Right, it is a atropine is a longer acting and homotropin is a shorter acting. Right, it is less like cycloplegic and it is more cycloplegic. Clear. So, what I'm doing here, I'm taking the morphine and changing the uh, structure of the morphine. Right, I'm changing the structure of the morphine. I'm changing slightly. Right, I'm changing slightly. So, slightly changing in structure of the natural substances is called as half we are changing the half of the molecule clear right we are changing the half of the molecular structure so that is why it is called as half means semi right semi and we are synthesizing in the lab we are attaching the molecules to the morphine right so these are called as semi synthetic molecules so semi synthetic drugs these are called as semi synthetic drugs so naturally is first one and the second one is a semi synthetic drugs so we are changing the structure half of the structure and we are modifying the structure from the the drugs which are obtained from the natural source this is about the semi synthetic drugs clear So, what are the sources are there further? What are the sources are there? See, we are directly, what we are doing? We are directly uh, synthesizing in the laboratories. The molecules which are synthesized in the laboratories, now these are called as synthetic drugs. Right? How these synthetic drugs are designed, right? These synthetic drugs are designed according to the receptors, right? Suppose this is the receptor and this is the ligand which it should get fit into this receptor, right? Now, this ligand would be made, right? This ligand would be designed according to the structure of the receptor. So, it can able to fit into the receptor. Now, this ligand is is able to get fit into the this receptor now this ligand is called as is this ligand is complementary to this receptor complementary means which can able to fit into the receptor the ligand means which is able to which is having affinity towards the receptor clear right this synthetic drugs this designed uh, designed in a way that drug can able to fit into the receptor right these type of designing in the laboratory in the docking structures in the system computers now these type of designing of the synthetic drugs is called as rational drug design right this kind of receptors this kind of receptors are 
synthesizing the process of the uh, molecules or ligands is called as synthetic drug designing right that is synthetic drug designing is called as rational drug designing rational age. so what is the relation between the drug and receptor so in a way that drug enable to drug can able to act onto the receptor in such a way they develop right this type of developing or designing is called as rational drug design clear so what are the other sources that we have in nowadays right so if you go with the some immunological disorders right immunological disorders we are using right we are using right antibodies directly monoclonal antibodies against to the disease right now these antibodies is being developed by the uh, technology called hybridoma technology right in shape of y but instead of uh, uh, drawing here just i'm drawing this right this is the antibody this is one antibody clear this is the antibody okay so how it is being synthesized how it is being cloned right how it is being cloned see in the antibodies how the antibodies are being synthesized in our in our body how the antibodies are being synthesized in our body any disease occurs to us antibodies will be the first defensive acting right defensive for the disease or pathogen clear right how the antibodies is being generated there is b cells b lymphocytes so the b cell b lymphocytes which is developing the plasma cells plasma cells and memory cells right one is it develops the it is differentiated into one is plasma cell one is memory cell memory cell which helps us to release the same antibodies same type of antibodies in the next episodes clear and here the plasma cells would be developing the antibodies plasma cells would be developing the synthesizing the antibodies see it is in the shape of gamma so you can link to gamma globulins in blood we are having the globulins and albumins are the proteins right which are maintaining the uh, you know uh, concentration of the solute and which are maintaining the you know uh, volume of the blood right in the plasma plasma maintaining the water levels clear so they, that that are globulins that globulins globulins are differentiated into the antibodies right globulins are differentiated into the gamma globulins differentiated into the antibodies and this is a this is the gamma globulin right now this b cell would be extracted from uh, one um, animal right you can take mice see it is not a mice but assume this is a mice right it is not a mice but assume this as a mice clear so they will be giving the antigens right antigens will be given to the mice and this will develop the immuno immunological cells they will extract the b cells right what is a b cell b cell is a is a lymphocytic cell right when it is uh, extracted from the mice and it gives the obviously it gives the uh, plasma cells and gives the antibody right it is giving the antibody it is it is there is no there is no uh, doubt but what is happening this b cells or plasma cells are having less span of time right less span of time lifetime life period of these cells are very less life period of these cells are very less so that is why what is happening there is cloned with the one cancerous cell this b cells will be attached sorry attached to the another cancerous cell so this will give the hybrid cell right this will give the one hybrid cell this is the hybrid cell and this hybrid cell will continuously uh, generating the or continuously giving the 
antibodies to us so likewise this antibodies is being cloned from the hybrid cell that is why this condition or this technology right this technology is called as hybridoma technology this is the cancerous cell why we need to take the why what, what is the what is the need to take the cancerous cell so the need of cancerous cell is cancerous cell will not go to die right will not able to die so that's why this cancerous cells will be attached to the plasma cells or b cells so further it gives the another cell that another cell is called as hybrid hybrid cell and that hybrid cell would giving us the antibodies continuously right it gives continuously right clear so this is about the hybridoma technology and further is genetic engineering genetic engineering what is the genetic engineering see whatever the insulin which are uh, which are extracted from the and which not able to cater to all the people around the world all the people who are suffering from from the who are suffering from the diabetes right type 2 diabetes or type 1 diabetes whatever it is right so it cannot able to cater right so that's why what our scientists have done so the insulin which are extracting from the animals insulin this insulin is particularly introducing introducing into a cell line and it will close the insulin right it will close the insulin cell line will close the insulin and it gives the insulin clones right it will give the insulin molecules right it will give the insulin molecules insulin many molecules now this type of insulin is called as regular insulin right this condition or whatever the product after giving insulin into the cell line and the product which we obtained from the cell line right that insulin is called as regular insulin see what is the disadvantage with the regular insulin regular insulin the disadvantage with the regular insulin is it is shorter acting it is shorter acting and no onset of action right there is no onset of action right it is shorter acting and there is no onset of action that means the action is zero zero action then what is the need of cloning this see after cloning the regular insulin would be modified right the regular insulin would be modified right this regular insulin this regular insulin so regular insulin insulin means what insulin is having 51 amino acid chain and insulin regular insulin has 21 amino acid chain as well as 30 amino acid chain that means there is a chain and b chains are there there is a chain as well as b chain is present clear so here a chain and b chain is there and among these chains if you introduced or if you replace the amino acids right amino acids if you modify the amino acid places and introducing some other amino acids you can improve the onset of action though these are the obtained uh, the insulin which will obtain right that such uh, insulins are uh, shorter acting but improved onset of action clear so regular insulin would be modified right if the regular insulin if the regular insulin is replaced with the glulysin uh, glutamic acid if you replace with the glutamic acid the insulin which you get here is glulysin glulysin right and if you attach the aspartic acid to it the insulin which you get here is aspart insulin aspart right if you add the lysine right 
the insulin which you get is lispro so these are the modified insulins from the regular insulin so if you add glutamic acid you will get the glulysin and if you uh, if you uh, attach with the aspartic acid you will get the aspart if you add, if you attach the lysine you will get the lispro see these insulins are having the these insulins are having the shorter acting shorter action but improved onset improved onset of action improved onset of action clear this is about the insulin right so these are the sources of the drugs which the humans or scientists being obtained from the right to uh, treat the diseases nowadays clear see pharmacology is nothing but it is deals with the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics pharmacokinetics pharmacodynamics see pharmacon means drug kinesis means movement pharmacon means drug kinesis means movement and here the pharmacon means drug and dynamos means change pharmacon means drug kinesis means movement see here is the movement of the drug right movement of the drug so pharmacon means drug and dynamos means change right whenever the drugs acting onto the receptor that will change in its right uh, change in pathophysiology right that change in the pathophysiology is called as pharmacodynamics clear so that receptor action would uh, brings the change in the pathophysiology right dynamos means change right that is bringing change in the pathophysiology right after acting on to the action right after acting on to the receptor sorry right this is called pharmacokinetic sign movement so what is the pharmacokinetics here just i'll give them just a brief right see drug we are uh, taking by uh, oral route and we are taking by parenteral route right so here here this drug would be administered to a, a living organism right administered to a living organism and this will undergoes just taking am orally oral drug this will undergoes this will go into the stomach and here there is disintegration occurs a dissolution occurs right then it attaches to the membrane right so it is moving across the membrane now this moving across the membrane and entering into the blood this part is called as absorption moving entering into the blood vessel and entering across the membrane is called as absorption right the drug movement across the membrane and entering into the blood is called as absorption right now this absorbed drug it get distributed into the various tissues right it is get distributed into the various tissues it may be into the heart it may be into the liver it may be into the liver clear it may be into the pancreas it may be into the spleen it may be into the brain right this is brain just as you see there are two lobes are there right it may be distributed into the tissues clear so this process is called as distribution right this process is called as distribution clear so here this distribution is being happening and when the drug is enters into the liver right and enters into the liver and this causes elimination 
right this this causes the breaking down of the drug and it is nothing but it is called as metabolism this causes the metabolism of the drugs right metabolism of the drugs clear in liver most of the drugs get metabolized right most of the drugs gets metabolized but in plasma in blood plasma there are some uh, drugs which are uh, which are getting distributed or which are uh, metabolized within the blood like there are plasma esterases are there that plasma esterases contains the cholinesterases pseudo cholinesterases that means esterases will break down the the drugs which are having the ester bonds like acetylcholine right succinylcholine right isomolol so all these drugs are being uh, right uh, broken down within the or metabolized within the blood only because it contains the pseudo plasma esterases choline esterases clear so the metabolism varies uh, different drugs at different places so we will discuss whenever these drugs come across in our uh, discussion right as we move on for further right so this metabolism occurs into the liver mainly most of the 90 percent of the drugs right so after metabolism it has right uh, soluble soluble uh, you know soluble drug drug particles right soluble molecules right this soluble molecules would would be excreted via right this soluble particles after metabolism it will undergoes excretion right these drugs undergoes excretion but see some drugs gets distributed after distributing into the various tissues right some uh, drugs which get distributed into the various tissues and these will again come back into the these drug molecules again come back into the blood and this will again gets redistributed back into the adipose tissue again redistributed into the adipose tissue adipose tissue means what high fat present in the adipose tissue high fat is present in the adipose tissue right when the high fat is present in the adipose tissue maximum the lipid soluble drugs would be re, uh, redistributed into the adipose tissue for its storage right so this phenomena so this phenomena is called as redistribution this process is called as redistribution redistribution occurs for the drugs which are get solubilized into the lipid molecules right lipid molecules which are get solubilized into the fat right so this is called redistribution process so if the drug gets settled down into the adipose tissue what happens there is no drug available in the uh, no much drug is available in the blood so if it is redistributed into the adipose tissue means that means right it is get settled down itself in the adipose tissue right get settled down into the adipose tissue that means the drug is not available in the blood so it will not distributed into the liver right so further metabolism so volume of distribution is high so volume of distribution means the amount of the molecule the amount of the drug which is present in the tissues right the amount of the drug which is present uh, in the tissues right so if the concentration of the drug which is present in the tissue uh, tissue uh, fluids uh, that means if the concentration of the tissue fluids the drug concentration of tissue fluids if it's if it is high that means what the volume of distribution of that drug is more right if the if the drug concentration is less at tissue level right at tissue fluid level that means what the volume of distribution of the drug is less right so likewise we uh, you know we need to remember right 
this is about the redistribution process if the drug is redistributed if the drug is redistributed means what the volume of distribution is uh, of the drug is very high that means the drug uh, availability of the drug is more compared to the plasma concentration the availability of the, the concentration of the drug is more at the tissue level compared to the compared to the drug available in the uh, blood clear so this is what the volume of distribution is if the volume of distribution is increased if the volume of distribution is increased the metabolism would be decreased decreased metabolism right decrease the metabolism right this is about the you know ad absorption distribution metabolism and excretion the study of the ADME that that is called as pharmacokinetics.